Welcome to the Primary Mastery Professional Development Materials. This short presentation will give you an insight into the nature of the materials and how you might use them. So why use the Primary PD materials? Firstly, to improve your teaching. Much research indicates that key to being a successful teacher of maths is subject knowledge, a particular type of subject knowledge though, that is characterized by a deep understanding of fundamental concepts and how to break these down and provide access for pupils. The materials support the development of this knowledge. Secondly, they will support your planning of lessons, although they are not lesson plans, but they will support the building of lessons. A key aspect of planning is thinking about how you will interact with your pupils to enable them to grasp key ideas. The materials will stimulate your thinking in this area. They will provide some resources to support your delivery of lessons. They are not as comprehensive in terms of resources as a textbook might be, but they do provide lots of exemplary activities, questions and representations of the mathematics. I continually hear the story from teachers who have used them that children have understood something for the first time and they exclaim, ah, that's why they didn't get it before, because I missed out that aspect. So they are pretty comprehensive in terms of exploring concepts and providing the detail of those concepts. They will support a rich curriculum. The quality of the curriculum is high on Ofsted's agenda in the new inspection framework. The materials provide a quality curriculum designed to develop a deep body of knowledge that later learning can be built upon. They are in fact a unique resource that cannot be found elsewhere. They build on research base and they bring together subject knowledge, common errors, variation and representations and many more things um, in a style that transfers directly into classroom practice. The big picture, what are the materials then? The primary PD materials represent a breaking down of the concepts to be learnt into coherent and connected steps in order to illustrate how the mathematics can be taught in a way that provides access for all pupils and develops mastery of mathematics. Teaching for mastery requires that all pupils are taught together so no one is left behind. Of necessity then, the teaching needs to provide access for all pupils. Just getting rid of traditional differentiation and teaching in the same way as we've always done is insufficient. Lessons need to be carefully constructed, scaffolded and coherent. The materials demonstrate a logical progression moving from A, step A to step A plus B, i.e. making the connections, what I've learnt, now let's use what I've learnt to add some new learning to. Thus continually building and unfolding concepts in a sequential manner. The structure of the primary PD materials. The materials consist of three spines, the number addition and subtraction spine, the multiplication and division spine, and the fraction spine. Although these spines are not narrowly defined by the title, however, as they also seek to integrate the other three areas of the curriculum, that of measures, geometry and statistics, as ways of extending and exemplifying these core concepts. Each spine has a number of segments that have been organised into year groups. Each segment has a link to a teacher guide and also a set of representations in slide form. Although all of the materials are contained in the teacher guide so that there is only one place to look when planning lessons. We will now look at a teacher guide in a little more detail. On the front page is the title of the guide um, and where it fits within the sequence of learning. So you will see here that this is numbered 3.2, that's spine 3 and segment 2. And the topic is unit fractions, identifying, representing and comparing them. Just scrolling down a little underneath, you will see that on the front of every guide outlined are the key teaching points that will be explored and exemplified within the guide. Moving down to the first section of the guide, each guide starts with an overview of the learning, summarising 
the learning that will take place within this particular guide, the things that children might find difficult, where the connections are, and how the learning progresses. Moving down then into the main section of the guide, each teaching point is exemplified in turn. The structure of this particular part of the guide is in two columns, two main columns. Firstly, a guidance column on the left. This leads the teacher through the sequence of the learning in detail, how the learning is built, how it's connected, key questions to ask, key, question, key activities um, to carry out, what children might find difficult and how these things might be overcome and linking back to things that they've learnt previously. On the right hand side is a column called the representations. In teaching for mastery, representing the mathematics is really key because that exposes mathematical concepts and provides access and enables children to make sense of the mathematics. You will see throughout the guide that we use representations um, a range that look at the concept in different dimensions. So in this context of fractions, um, we look at fractions within the context of area models, also within the context of linear models, and also in the context of quantity models. And that will continue throughout the guide, recognizing that children need to view the concept in those three ways in order to secure and master the mathematics. You will also see, going back to the left-hand column, some key features. First of all, the guide starts off with making reference to the previous learning. Making connections is really important and that continues throughout the guide. Making connections to the, to the previous teaching point, making connections to the previous sub-teaching point. I've also highlighted another key feature and that is of STEM sentences. Um, a STEM sentence is a sentence that children repeat and use in lots, lots of different contexts. Teachers are finding them really helpful. They're finding that, that they enable children to communicate. Um, they find that they're helping them in their reasoning, identifying what is key in a particular context con or it, of a particular concept. Um, and they develop fluency in being able to apply um, the concept to lots of different contexts. So look out for those in guides. They are littered throughout teaching guides. I'm just going to, going to take you to page 20 um, of the guide because I want to um, identify um, a classic activity that you'll th see throughout the guides. In teaching for mastery, it's not only important to learn what a concept is, but it's also important to learn what a concept is not. And in this particular task, children are required to identify which images and labels are correct and which are incorrect. For example, is this one really half of this L shape? This enables children to think more deeply about the concept um, and make progress in their learning. The final page I'm going to take you to is page 35 of this particular guide where we're getting towards the end. Here you will see um, a challenge activity. So these materials really do address the needs of the whole class. There, there is scaffolding for everybody to look at the rigour of the mathematics and there's also challenge for everybody to extend their learning. A really nice question here where the same number of children, um, four children um, in one class represent a fifth of that class um, and four children in another class represent a sixth of that class. Which class has some more students? Looking now at the second element of the materials, the representation slide packs. As mentioned earlier, all of the representations are included in the teacher guide, but reproduced in a more dy dynamic form using animation in order to expose the concept with greater clarity in the slide packs. This is one slide from segment 3.2. 
Notice in this example how the image of the hexagon remains constant, but the size of the fraction changes. At this point in the learning, we are introducing the fact that the whole can be divided into any number of equal parts. Later, the same image will be returned to to illustrate that the greater number of equal parts, the smaller the fraction. Note also that, sh that these should not be used in isolation, but in conjunction with the teacher guide. Also, they do not represent lesson plans, but can, however, be inserted into lessons and used to interact with pupils. Getting started then in using the materials. Identify the unit of work you will start with. If you're using a textbook, then start with the subject area identified in the sequencing of the textbook. Otherwise, use the order recommended in the NCTM sequencing guidance. But be aware that you may have to go back to an earlier segment and fill in some gaps in children's learning. Read the overview and skim read the whole unit. Then return to the first teaching point and work through, carrying out the activities yourself or with colleagues. The advantage of working with colleagues is the rich discussion that you will engage in. However, either way, reflect on what your pupils already know and how you can use the ideas to build knowledge and understanding. If you're using a textbook, then the ideas will certainly supplement things in the textbook and you may need to want to select some of the ideas to use. They will certainly deepen your understanding of the concepts being developed and enable you to develop to deliver them more effectively. Note, however, that these are not lesson plans and you should identify a short section to build a lesson from. Avoid being over ambitious. It is better to go slowly to ensure that children have grasped key ideas before moving on. Also, do not assume that because things seem easy, you can skip these bits. This is often how children fall behind. You'll probably need to supplement the materials with additional practice material and maybe activities. But all the key mathematical ideas are there and a range of activities and practice are exemplified, which can support the creation of further examples. Primary professional development materials are free and available to download on the NCTM website. Please do feedback to us and share your experiences. We would love to hear from you. Thank you.